What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Snowbike Mike, back with your daily gaming hype report. Today is Thursday, August 8th, 2019, and here are the top gaming stories that you need to know about. Remember, if you like any of the headlines that I bring to you today, please go to the articles directly and support those incredible game journalists around the globe. Story links can be found in the show description below, so let's get into it. Here are the top three stories that you need to know about. Story number one. Call of Duty Modern Warfare has a Tamagotchi kept alive by your kills. This story from IGN.com by Alicia Judge. The story reads, Call of Duty Modern Warfare's multiplayer mode will offer a variety of gear for players to support their battle efforts, including a Tamagotchi that feeds on death. In case you entered this world after the 90s, Tamagotchis were small, wearable devices that contained virtual pets. These toys task children with keeping the Tamagotchi alive by feeding it, cleaning it, and keeping it happy. So far, so wholesome. Developer Infinity War decided to implement a version of Tamagotchis in the new Call of Duty as an alternative to the vanilla wristwatch that players can choose to wear in multiplayer. While the ordinary watch will display your real-world time in-game, Call of Duty's Tamagunchies will be directly affected by your kill-to-death ratio. So if you don't rack up those kill streaks, a small virtual creature will starve, wither, and die. Oh my gosh, Call of Duty continues to wow me with this upcoming Modern Warfare. I mean, they already sold me on the campaign, and now I'm all about the multiplayer, baby. I love Tamagotchi so much. Growing up, I had about four of them strapped onto my backpack as I'd head to school. I'd feed them, I'd wash them, and I'd care for these Tamagotchis so much. But I also do remember a time when I used to forget about my Tamagotchis, and the machine would just constantly beep, beep, beep as the Tamagotchi begged for food and cleaning. And now I have to go into Call of Duty Modern Warfare with a Tamagunchi strapped to my wrist. And guess what? I'm really bad at these games. I have poor kill-to-death ratios, and I think I'm going to watch this small creature wither, starve, and die before my eyes way too many times. But big shout-out to Infinity War, making a fun one for the wristwatch and switching it up to a Tamagunchi. This is some A-plus game-making right now, and I'm all about it. Story number two. Pokemon Sword and Shield, new Pokemon forms and Team Yell announced. This story from IGN.com by Alicia Judge. The story reads, Nintendo has dropped a new trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield, revealing brand new Pokemon, evolutions, new Galarian forms, and a new antagonist group, Team Yell. The trailer unveiled new Galarian forms, including a Galarian Weezing sporting two top hats in the shape of industrial chimneys. Meanwhile, Galarian Zigagoon and Linowan are dark and normal type and come equipped with abilities Gluttony and Pickup. Galarian Linowan will be able to evolve into a brand new two-legged Obstagoon who sports abilities Guts and Reckless. Nintendo gave a first look at New Rivals 2 with the still mysterious Beatty and a young goth woman named Marnine. We were also introduced to the game's rocket-like faction, Team Yell, who seem to be pink-painted and punky fans of Marnine. Pokemon fans out there, you need to check out this new trailer right away if you haven't already. Gosh darn it, the Pokemon company continue to tug on my heartstrings with all of these new dope looking Pokemon. I mean, come on, the new Weezing looks so good. They should have had this from the jump. I cannot wait to catch that Pokemon. And I'm going to make him one of my main six Pokemon all throughout the game. Of course, the new Rivals 2 looks so cool. And the new group, I love Love this new team yell. I'm all about those punky fans. I think it's going to be a great time, and I can't wait for this release this fall. And now for our final story of your Thursday story, number three. Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, major publishers commit to loot box disclosures. This story from GameSpot.com by Steve Watts. The story reads, at the Federal Trade Commission FTC public panel on microtransactions in video games, the Entertainment Software Association announced that all three console platform holders have agreed to a voluntary change in their policy toward loot boxes. Though the ESA's Michael Warnick defended the practice in broad terms, he said going forward, any new games or game updates that add loot boxes on Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony platforms will be required to disclose the rarity rates of items. 
Quote, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony have indicated to the ESA a commitment to new platform policies with respect to the use of paid loot boxes in games that are developed for their platform. Warnick said, specifically, this would apply to new games and game updates that add loot box features and it would require the disclosure of the relative rarity or probabilities of obtaining randomized virtual items in games available on their platforms, end quote. Warnick noted that many leading publishers that are members of the ESA have committed to a similar approach at the publisher level, and this voluntary disclosure puts all platforms on par with the mobile disclosure requirements. In a statement, the ESA noted that publishers who have agreed to the disclosures included Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, Bethesda, Bungie, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, Take-Two Interactive, Ubisoft, Warner Bros., and Wizards of the Coast. The disclosures are said to be coming by the end of 2020 and other ESA member companies are considering joining the policy. So, gamers out there, this has been a big one over the past year and really a long time before that. But loot boxes really getting cranked down upon. You heard it first. Warnick does say that he likes the policy of loot boxes, but we need to be better at disclosing the rarity rates of these loot boxes and how people can get those items. I just played Grand Theft Auto with the casino update, and I thought they did a terrific job with the big spinning wheel at giving you the rates at which you can win certain certain items and I think for the overall populace of gamers this would be a great way if you're going to continue to do loot boxes in your game at least show the rates at which these items do come from so the people know what they're really at stake with and what they're gambling with on the flip side come on let's just go to the Fortnite way where you have an item store and I can just pick out the certain in games cosmetics or items that I want to buy with my hard earned money forget the loot boxes just put up a store and I'll buy it, I'll support it, and I'll give you my hard-earned money. And with that, that will conclude this Thursday, August 8th, 2019 Hype Report. It's your boy, Snowbike Mike, reminding you, if you liked any of the gaming headlines that I brought to you today, please go to the show description below. I've left you all the article links there. You can give them a click and support those incredible games journalists around the globe. You have now been caught up for your Thursday, and I need to go out and buy as many Tamagotchi toys as I can handle, because gosh darn it, I am pumped up for Call of Duty multiplayer and the Tamagunchies. Have a great Thursday out there, gamers. Keep gaming!